Hi, welcome back, Matt Osborne here. Question for you. Would you be interested if I told you that you could buy a brand new Leica M-Mount lens for under £150? What if I then told you that the same lens fits in a pouch this big, so it's small enough to take with you anywhere? And finally, what if I also told you that the lens is so much fun to use, it may actually make you go out and shoot more than you're doing already. So if you're in a rut, stay tuned, this lens could be for you. Today is Leica M-Mount lens review number 28, and we're looking at the Funcap 18mm f8 Leica M-mount lens. I'll give you the lens spec, I'll give you example photos with three cameras, the Leica M240, the Leica CL and the Lumix S5. And then I'll also give you three alternative wide angle lenses if you think this lens is not for you. Join me for my day out in London with the 18mm Vanilla cap lens. It might be better than you think. Now that's how big the lens pouch is, it gives you some idea of the bulk of this lens. <laughs> this is the Fun Leader cap lens, an 18mm f8 ridiculously small lens, which the guys at Fun Leader kindly sent me to review. So this is a sponsored video, but they've not seen this video before. I'm telling you guys or showing you guys. So it's just my own thoughts. So what do you get in the box? And then in the box itself, you have a nice tin. If I uh, take it out of the box. And there we have the Funlida 18mm. That is one crazy small lens. <laughs> and I'm expecting it to be this deep with a really large rear element. Should we check? Nope. <laughs> it really is that small. So let me move the box and I'll put it onto the camera. And hey presto, here's one I prepared earlier. So there it is on the Leica M240. And in terms of the lens specifications, this lens is obviously manual focus only. It's an aluminium alloy design. And as I think I mentioned, obviously with the Leica, this is the Leica M mount lens. So there you can see the rear element. In terms of the lens design, it is six elements in five groups and it's just it is so small I think it's roughly one centimeter deep maybe less and it weighs 40 grams which is around 1.4 ounces so when the lens is mounted on your camera it's almost as if the the lens is not even there it doesn't extend any further when you adjust the the focus it is like a fixed fixed length maybe a slight movement no, it is fixed length. In terms of the what we've got on the lens, you have a distance scale in both meters on the outside on the bottom, and then also in feet on the top, which is quite a nice design. So as you move the lever, you're getting a scale here. So 1.5 feet is obviously the same as 0.45 meters. Now this is better than I think one of the earlier designs or maybe the other mount. If you read online about the fun leader 18 mil. If you're not careful, if you read the wrong reviews, some of them say close focus distance 0.8 meters, but the like M mount one is 0.45 meters, so that's much more useful. It also has a hard stop at one meter. Can you hear it? I'm not sure if the audio will pick that up. It's basically a hard, a hard stop, and then you push again, and it goes to infinity. This is not a range finder coupled lens, but obviously. <laughs> For any of you that have done much with wide lenses, if the lens is 18mm, your depth of field is so deep at f8, you don't really need to move the, the depth of field scale that much. If you leave it probably roughly between 1 meter and infinity, you're going to get most of your photo in focus. Because the lens is so shallow, it'd probably be quite difficult or quite fiddly to turn by hand, so the little lever is quite useful. And then if you're using it, you know that at the hard stop or basically pointing at six o'clock. So it's really easy to basically focus without looking, which makes it super fun for kind of snapshot type photography. This is obviously an 18 mil lens as mentioned, but like M mount cameras have a widest camera frame line in the viewfinder of 28 millimeters. So you can't use the frame lines in the viewfinder. So I guess you have three options. Option one, if you're shooting an M8 or an M9, you could just guesstimate and basically point roughly the, the direction you want to shoot and 
guesstimate your composition, take your shot, check your photo, adjust if needed, number one. Number two, you could use a wide angle viewfinder, such as this 21 to 25 mil Voigtlander that I have, which is a bright line viewfinder. Can you see that? So it's a bit messy. So with that, again, if you're an M8 or M9 shooter, or, or film shooter, I'd recommend using it with a close to 18 mil viewfinder and that will give you again a good estimate of what you're going to get in your picture and then option three if you're m240 m10 any camera with a live view you can just use your live view button and you can see clearly to compose and take your pictures and just to recap this is not a range find a couple lens so if you're looking through the viewfinder you're not going to see your image change with the rangefinder patch because this is not linked to the rangefinder it's also worth mentioning that despite it being a cheap lens, it's got a really nice smooth focus throw and the aluminium alloy build quality is really nice for such a low cost lens. Now for any of you that have used wide lenses on a Leica M240 or similar camera in the past, you see the same problem as you do with many of the other wide angle lenses and that is you see purple fringing on the side of the image. I'll bring up some examples to show you but you'll see a small amount on one side and then a deeper amount on the other side. This makes the lens less useful for colour photography or pretty much not useful at all for colour photography with an M240 or an M10 but it is amazing for black and white. I'll cover that in the pros and cons at the end. So that is one con for using it on the M240. And if we put it onto a Leica CL, obviously with the Leica CL, the CL is an L mount camera. So you've got two options. You can either get the M mount lens as I have here and then use a Leica M, turn it around, and then use a Leica M to Leica L adapter. I can put a link to the adapters in the description if you want. You don't necessarily need the Leica adapter, there are cheaper options. Because you've got the adapter, now the, the lens is a bigger size. But you can also get the lens in direct L mount. Uh, I'll show you that at the end of the video. Because the Leica CL is a crop sensor camera, you no longer have the issue of the purple at the side of the images, and it does take clean looking shots. Obviously it's not as wide so it just becomes maybe more of a normal lens. Now I also use the lens on my Lumix S5 which is recording the sound to this video as we speak. Uh, so excuse the wiring. Now one benefit of using it on the Lumix S5 is there's no purple fringing that we saw on the Leica M240. The only downside is because the Lumix is obviously a much deeper camera. You obviously don't really have the benefit of the, the small size lens on a small size camera. Uh, but the functionality is much more useful on the, the Lumix S5 because it's full frame yet you don't have the, the purple edges. So one question you may have is who is this lens best suited to? So here are some sample photos shot in black and white. You can see the heavy vignetting this lens gives, but in terms of sharpness, the center sharpness is actually quite good. I just applied my Mr. Leica presets to all these photos and, and I think many of them are quite usable. But now if we look at some photos in color, you really notice the purple fringing and it does make the photos a lot less usable. If you focus close to your subject at 0.45 meters you can get some foreground background separation which I thought was quite nice. The details on these buttercups was better than I expected. These photos are shot with the Leica CL and you can see the distortion isn't too bad photographing this brick wall and then this photo of the sky shows that there's no purple fringing. In terms of vignetting on a crop sensor, I did this photo of a white wall. I know it's not my normal type of photos, but just to give you an idea that it is a much more usable lens on a crop sensor like a CL camera if you want a more normal lens, where if you want to have a more, I guess, fun lens with the kind of stronger vignette look, then just shoot it on full frame. Then talking to full frame, if we now look at some sample photos with the Lumix S5, all of these images are shot with a full frame Panasonic camera while I was in London and again I think some of the photos are quite usable despite it being kind of a cheap fun lens as they, as they try to sell it. I even tried some short video clips walking around London. Yeah. 
but in hindsight I wish I'd shot them as static street photos because this lens is really well suited to street photography. I'd say street photography, fun snapshot photography, maybe less professional landscape photography where it doesn't match if you get some distortion. I really enjoyed it. It seemed to be a cross between using an iPhone for street photography but with the benefit of a high resolution digital sensor and also much longer battery life. My iPhone battery always seems to die when I take pictures. <laughs> Can I recommend this lens to you? In terms of pros and cons, one of the biggest pro for me is the size of the lens. It is so small you can carry it everywhere. So that makes it much more useful than some of the other wide lens options for the M240. I'll show you those in a second. So the small and light tick box, kind of a fun creative lens with the heavy vignetting. It makes the normal scene maybe a bit more arty. Low cost, I'll tell you the price in a second. Really nice for black and white. And for me personally, I really enjoyed it for street photography. I just really enjoyed it in kind of a busy London city centre, for example. In terms of cons, the lens was less useful on the M240 because of the colour fringing, but it was fine on the Lumix S5 and the Leica CL. If you just stick to black and white photography, you can kind of rule out that disadvantage. The lens design obviously does give heavy vignetting, but, but again, if you don't mind vignetting, you can rule that out as a con. The lens does render images softer than some of the other wide lens alternatives which I'm about to show you. So if you do prefer super sharp images from say your, your Leica cameras, this might be a bit too much of a fun lens for you. This lens will distort so it's not for the serious landscape photographer or say architecture photographer, but then the lens isn't aimed at that part of the market so I don't think it's doing anything that it shouldn't. And lastly one practical issue, because it is an f8 lens, if you're shooting in low light conditions, you will find that the, the M240, and say especially the like M8 and like M9, because they're not great at high ISO, I think you'll find the images too grainy or there just won't be enough light at f8, because obviously that's your, your widest aperture. If you're using the lens on a more modern like a camera or on say the Lumix S5 in this example, where the high ISO is much better, then you don't really have an issue even in low light, f8 is not really a problem. Now what I forgot to mention earlier in the video is I also tested this lens on my Leica M2. Now for any of you Leica M10 shooters to visualise the size of this lens, the Leica M2 is obviously the same size as your Leica M10, so in terms of thickness they're roughly the same. Just bear in mind if you're shooting film you will need a lot of light to use this lens. So the question is, how much does this lens cost? Now this lens is not listed new on eBay or on Amazon, so you have to buy it directly from their link, which I'll include in the description below. They did give me an offer code where you'll get 5% off if you just add the coupon code when you make your order. So use the coupon code if you want an extra 5% off the list price. The list price of the M-mount lens is £129. But the good news is, if you're a Leica CL shooter, you can get the L-mount lens, which is even cheaper. That comes in at £93. So you can get this lens in like L mount, Nikon Z mount, Canon mount, Fuji mount. I'll bring up a picture to show you because I can't remember them all. I think there's five different mounts. This particular lens design is only for the Leica M mount version, where the other lens is slightly different. Again, I'll bring up a picture to show you how it looks. I think for the cost, this lens offers really great value for money. There's obviously no electronics in this lens, so there's not really anything that can go wrong with it. It's just simple metal and glass like you get in the, the vintage lenses. Uh, so I would recommend this lens and I, I will obviously keep it and continue to use it when I need to pack light and I can't carry other wide angle lenses. And with that said, I will show you three other wide angle lenses which may be a better alternative depending on your interests. So my first recommendation is the Voigtlander Super Wide Helia. 15mm f4.5 lens. This is a deeper lens. This is actually the LTM mount, but I've also got it in M mount. So check out that video for full details and example images using the 15mm. This is a much sharper lens and it's my sharpest wide angle lens, but you do pay a premium for the, the increased sharpness. So option one, 15mm f4.5. Option two, I've still got it on my Leica Barnack camera. This is the Roussard 20mm f5.6 lens. 
Now the Russo is a small lens, but it can't really compete with the, the fun leader lens. There's the difference in size and you can probably gauge the difference with the, the 15mm. The Russo lens to my eyes gives it a more classic rendering and is probably not quite as sharp and it's not as contrasty as the 15mm Helia. It's a really great combination on this Leica 1C Barnett camera. Again watch the video on the Russo 20mm for full details and example photos. And last but not least another Voigtlander lens. This is the Voigtlander Color Scope R 21mm f4. Now I know this is a very popular lens for like M shooters and that is for good reason. This lens gives you good sharpness and great contrast and again is a great wide angle option for like M shooters. So the Voigtlanders give modern rendering, then the Roussard gives sharp but more classic rendering and then the, the fun leader 18mm lens as reviewed here gives maybe softer more fun rendering but check the videos out for for full details. So to finish if you want to get the fun leader 18mm lens click the link in the description and make sure you use the offer code to get 5% off. If you prefer something like the Russo check eBay because this is a vintage lens and finally if you want a Voigtlander lens if, if you live in the UK again if you use the discount code you can get discounts off these lenses too if you buy from the Robert White shop. Lastly a big thank you to Fun Leader for sending me this lens to try out and as always a big thank you to my patrons. See you in the next video.